We are good. Okay, good. Um, called a Wednesday, February 17th, 2021, meeting of the Weathersfield Planning and Zoning Commission to order. Um, Joe, would you call the roll, please? Sure. Can everybody hear me okay? Yes. Um, yep. All right. Rich Roberts is here. Ryan yep. Allard, not, not here. Joseph Hammer here. Jim Hughes. Yes. George Oikel. Here. Tom Dean. Here. Tony Homicki. Dave Edwards. Here. Michael Vieira. I think I saw yeah, him. Sure. Yep. David Drake. Here. Yolanda Antoniak. Yes, here. And how about Hazim uh, Korkutovic? Nope. Okay. All right, good. So that's nine. Everybody will be seated. Um, first item of business is a public hearing. Um, the way we do that is the applicant will be allowed to make a presentation. Then the commission may have some questions for the applicant. There may be some back and forth. Um, following that, anyone in the public that wishes to ask questions or comment on the application will be given an opportunity to do so. Um, depending on whether we have enough information to um, that we feel comfortable making a decision, we may decide to close the public hearing and go into uh, deliberations. If there are a lot of open questions or additional information that we still need in order to be able to fully evaluate the, the application, uh, we may decide to continue the hearing. But uh, in any case, we will start. Uh, public hearing application number 206921Z, seeking a special permit in accordance with section 52F4 of the Weathersfield zoning regulations to allow for the establishment of a fraternal organization social club for the Canacat Nisi Society at 446 Silestine Highway. Um, if there's someone here on behalf of the applicant, please introduce yourself and tell us what you'd like to do. Yes, uh, my name is uh, Paul Perrana. I am the president of the Canicatenese Society. And uh, we are looking for a special permit that will allow us to rent the property located at 446 Celestine Highway. We are a fraternal organization, as you mentioned. We expect we'll have about 50 to 60 members this year, down from about 90 in 2020. but. Uh, in addition to that, my guess is that the attendance will be even less than that. Over the past couple of months, we've been uh, averaging between 15 to 20 people at the most in any one day at the club. Some people just come in and out. Some people stay and play cards or watch a soccer game on television. Uh, I have, uh, in my letter of the uh, 3rd of February, I outlined all the information. Hopefully you've had a chance to read it. If not, I can answer any question you have. But I wanted to update you on a couple of items that I've been discussing with Peter. The, um, the fire marshal had asked about the basement that we do not have any plans whatsoever to use the, uh, the, the basement. It will only be used for storage. There will not be any other activity taking place there. I mentioned the uh, parking situation this afternoon. I had a very good uh, telephone conference call with the uh, two doctors that manage uh, the uh, animal hospital. We've talked about the uh, parking situation, the possibility of working together on snow removal, and uh, we will go forward with that. In addition, I have contacted the owner of the uh, building across the street from us at uh, 449 Salasdine Highway, uh, which uh, has uh, ample parking and requesting that we get somewhere about five to 10 additional parking uh, spaces assigned to our society. I mentioned the average attendance is about 10 to 12 people a day. Uh, we do not have any special needs of any special equipment other than the espresso machine. And uh, I just want to let you know that about 25 of the 90 members that uh, are currently, or were members uh, last year of our society actually reside 
in Wethersfield. This for us, we hope, will be a temporary move. The agreement is for a six month plus an option at our option for an additional six months. And hopefully if uh, I guess the town and the developers approve the uh, auction house, uh, that would be ideally where we would like to go for a number of reasons. Um, I'll be more than glad to answer any questions you may have. All right, does anybody have any questions? Looks like George dropped out of the meeting. Um, I guess that my question is, is for Peter is what what is the parking requirement based on? Is it based on square footage for a place of assembly? And and if so, what is the what is the requirement? Um, you know, I. So, uh, Rich, in answer to your question, we do not have a specific parking provision for uh, a social um, club, fraternal organizations such as this. The nearest thing uh, we ha have is, um, uh, as you mentioned, a, a place of assembly um, with with the uh, COVID limitations in terms of assembly of, of people. Um, we haven't really gotten into the details of how they're going to uh, lay out the uh, individual space. Uh, I, I was more concerned with, um, you know, their typical um, visitation during a normal day in terms of backing into the, the parking uh, numbers. The, the site presently has 15 parking spaces. Uh, there was mm -hmm. additional space added last year up at the front uh, to uh, provide a little bit easier access. Uh, if you're familiar with the property, it slopes down. So uh, there are there are a set of steps, uh, and the front is handicapped accessible. Um, but uh, in total, there are 15 parking spaces there. Um, and, and, and sorry to kind of not really answer your question, but it really depends on how they're going to lay it out. Whether it's going to be fixed seating or just individual chairs and and, and that, that kind of thing, in terms of maybe backing into an assembly place of assembly number. Okay. Yeah. I mean, I. I... I was frankly, you know, concerned about um, people running across five lanes of the Silas Veen more than anything else. And if, you know, if they can work out a deal with the, the, the animal hospital or, or something like that, or if it turns out that there are, you know, a sufficient number of spaces on, on site, you know, frankly, I'd feel a lot more comfortable with that than um, setting the precedent of, you know, basically having pedestrian traffic in the middle of a block running across, you know, the Silas Dean Highway. Um, does anybody else have any questions for if the I, uh, If I may, uh, on the COVID uh, question, uh, we have, uh, we reopened back in August. We've been extremely careful, obviously. I, I think I mentioned in my uh, letter that the uh, average age of our members is probably mid to late 70s. So we want to be extremely careful. And so far, knock on wood, we have not had any issues of any kind, but we have somebody who is kind of an attendant who cleans the, the uh, table. The inside is going to be spaced out. We only uh, are going to be using in terms of space about six tables uh, where uh, uh, people may sit down and watch a game or play a card game. A table usually has uh, uh, four chairs around or may a maximum of four chairs. So I did not anticipate that there's going to be any um, risk really associated with the, uh, uh, you know, with COVID. We'll make sure and comply with all the requirements. Okay. Does anyone else have any questions for the applicant? Will there be any any signage placed on the building or the lot for the society? No. I'm sorry, I was I wasn't planning on doing that because of the temporary nature. We hope of the uh, <clears throat> excuse me uh, of the lease. We hope that you know, let's say within six months we'll be able to move, and it doesn't make sense for you know to put up a uh, sign and go through that process. So we were not 
planning on doing any signage whatsoever. We okay. may put a sign, you know, obviously the COVID sign that says wear a mask. And usually yeah. uh, right now where we are, we have a sign that says members only because it is a private society. But other than that, we, we don't have any interest in any signs. Okay. Uh, Mr. Chairman, I have a question. Sure, Tom. I'm Dean speaking. Uh, just a quick question of the applicant, if I may, and followed by possibly a comment, depending upon the response I get. Uh, the question is this, uh, you've indicated uh, you are attempting to negotiate uh, some uh, agreements with uh, neighboring property owners for additional parking. My question is, do you intend to have uh, any such arrangements uh, to be put in writing as a written agreement between you and the uh, particular uh, uh, additional par property owners? Uh, that you may be uh, uh, securing uh, additional parking from? So um, I was discussing this with Peter. I'm not sure that I have uh, uh, I, I've progressed enough in my discussions to be able to answer specifically the, the question. Uh, I just had this one conversation this afternoon with the doctors that run the animal hospital and we're going to need to continue those conversations. I've not had any discussion uh, uh, with the people across the street. If you guys do not like that option, you know, that's fine by me. I, I don't have a problem. I'm not even sure that we actually need the additional space. Where we are now on Franklin Avenue, we have a total of eight parking spaces. Now, obviously, there is plenty of parking on the street, which is not the case and uh, where we're going. But insofar as the actual number of parking associated with the building that we currently occupy that is only eight. So I, it may not even be that big an issue, but obviously I wanted to respond to the concerns so that Peter was expressing. And insofar as your question on the written part, I am not sure that I can answer at this point in time, whatever is appropriate to do. If you guys would like us to have something in writing, we'll do something in writing. I, I don't see any problems from my side. Okay, well, my, my comment uh, to your response is this. Uh, I'm, uh, I feel good about your, your good faith attempts to uh, uh, you know, have a, you know, a contingent option to, uh, to secure additional parking spaces. However, for purposes of, of our action tonight, um, it would seem like we really can't rely upon, uh, you know, such, uh, uh, you know, attempts uh, before we could really rely upon uh, such things. I think we would need to have, uh, a, you know, evidence of a written agreement. And my question was whether or not you intended to secure a written agreement, not whether you actually had or was in actual negotiations uh, for a hard and fast agreement? It it's, um, was a question regarding your intent. So the, the, the uh, uh, intent is to comply with the town requirements. If that's the town requirements, we will definitely do that. I have no problem whatsoever. The only part of your comment that uh, I'm a little concerned about, quite honestly, is that uh, uh, we're under uh, I think we've made every effort, as Peter can uh, tell you, to measure what the impact may be from the cars. So we may not even need anything at all. And I, we were certainly hoping that uh, if that kind of conditions was to be attached to the approval, that within the next 30 days, uh, we will resolve the issue in some manner in written form and we coordinate with Peter I guess we would appreciate this because of the timing of the closing of our building that we're selling and the uh, moving that we need to do. I got a question. Sure, Jim. Yeah, so Mr. Prada, you'd have no problem just working directly with Peter, ironing out None. any particular... Uh... None whatsoever. Okay. And also, uh, you said up to 20 people a day. The people come at various times during the day, and maybe some of the guys, people ride together. They may share. Not, all, 
and not only that, but some people just uh, come in, literally have a cup of coffee. You know, they may stay 15, 20 minutes, right. and then they take off. So it's not uh, as yeah. if we have 20 people consistently throughout the day. Yeah, that's just two of the yeah. So, yeah. okay, I got you. I'm comfortable with it. Thank you, Paul. Mm -hmm. Thank you. And the hey, question, Rick, uh, go ahead. Uh, Rich Dave Drake, I, I thought there was no parking requirement at all. And this type of uh, what he's asking for. I thought that's how the meeting started and it was written down in the document. Well, there's no specific parking requirement. I, I think it's, you know, kind of generally understood that we require whatever is necessary, you know, just basically so that we have a sense of, you know, what, what their parking needs are and how they're going to be accommodated so that we can kind of factor yeah. that into, you know, the neighborhood and so forth here, you know, on street parking, isn't going to be an issue. You know, they're not going to park on the lawn because there is none, you know, it, frankly, it, it seems like it's almost going to be a self-limiting condition. It's like, Oh, there's no Correct. parking yeah. spaces. I'll come back in two hours. Um, uh, well, I'm just kind of thinking how this gentleman goes to a neighbor it says, I need a written agreement that you allow me to park here. I'm not sure why he would do that other than a good faith thing saying, hey, yeah, if you want to park there, that's fine. As long as we have space. You know, I just try well, to, I'm just trying to think how that would work. Yeah, I mean, and, and, and I think, you know, just speaking for myself, given it, if this were going to be a more permanent situation. C correct, right. Yeah. Um, right. And if it weren't kind of confined by the the COVID restrictions, I, I'd be a lot more concerned about it. Um, you know, I, I don't think, at least speaking for myself, I, I don't think I was looking for, you know, the kind of written shared parking agreement that we would do if, you know, there were two shopping centers that abutted each other on the Silas Dean and they needed, you know, needed to count each other's parking spaces in order to comply. You know, I thought at most it would be, you know, a letter basically saying when we're closed, you can use four of our parking spaces for your members, you know, just make sure you have insurance, that sort of thing, as opposed to, you know, having something formal and recorded like we would on a, on a more permanent situation. But that, that's just me. Yolanda, you were going to say or ask something. Oh, yeah, thank you. Um, well, no, I think my question was, was um, answered because I do see this as a temporary situation. I think you mentioned that it was going to be six months or maybe a year because you're waiting to get into another property on Church Street. Is that correct, Mr. Parada? Yeah. Yes, okay. So, so like many of you here on the board, I, I am comfortable with the fact that it is temporary. And I was going to ask you if you carpooled and, and uh, <laughs> Commissioner Hughes um, asked that question. It's just, just a different yes. way because carpooling sounds so old fashioned, you know, but, but not, um, only, <laughs> not only do we carpool, but we have some members who because of their conditions uh, cannot drive. So usually the wife or somebody in the family just drops them off. You know, they spent a few hours there. We, we're kind of like a senior center, and effectively, just yeah. for Italian Americans. But yeah. um, so that's uh, that's why I say I don't think it's going to be that big an issue. But I want to, you know, respond to your needs. Mm -hmm. Very good. I'm all set. I think I, I have no problem with with this application. Okay. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions or comments they want to raise at this point? I'm good. I'm good. Okay. Uh, it is a public hearing. Are there any members of the public that wish to speak on this application, either for or against or asking questions? Going once. Um, Peter, are there any things that you think we should have as stipulations or conditions you know, to to handle the kind of the vagueness of the the occupancy and the the parking situation and anything else that we might not have discussed. I think the the temporary nature of the use may want to be factored into a condition so that um, if this does become a longer term thing, you at least have an opportunity at some point in the future to evaluate you know, the parking situation and how it's worked out. So that gives us an opportunity 
to have that conversation to at a point in time. Um, I, I wasn't concerned about the parking situation either, given the temporary nature and given the, you know, as you said, the times that we're in, plus understanding, you know, the nature of the uh, membership getting smaller. So uh, if you if you feel more comfortable, um, you know, I, I, with, to, to have some more parking associated from the veterinary clinic, maybe not an agreement, but at least um, you know, some correspondence from them that they have been consulted and that there is an opportunity in certain cases to uh, utilize their parking it, it, and work that out with me. You know, that might be a secondary uh, condition if you wanted to apply that. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's probably belt and suspenders, but we have to remember that we're approving the use, not Mr. Parada, you know, so that if it's the, you know, Mike Vieira's social club that comes in here next month and you know we'll have all kinds of problems so I, I think we should probably at least cover that base does anyone else have anything George you're muted make a motion to close no I couldn't tell if George was trying to say something he was muted and he still is okay no I, I agree with that that uh, last okay. comment should be put in and uh, restricted to him. So makes sense to me because I don't see it as a problem. Okay. All right. Nothing else. Um, Jim made a motion to close the hearing. Is there a second? Second, George. Okay. Okay. Motion by Jim, second to George to close the hearing. Uh, all in favor, say aye or raise your hand. Aye. 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 Opposed? All right, the hearing's closed. Um, someone want to make a motion to start discussion? Uh, George will be. I'll make a motion to approve uh, the application with the condition that uh, our town planner has suggested. Uh, do you want to repeat that, uh, what you recommended, Peter? So the first condition was uh, applying a, um, a time frame for the you know, extension of the permit validity, um, whether it's six months. I think they said they have a six month uh, lease with another six month option. So depending how you want to break that down. And then uh, secondly, um, that you know, our, our file reflect um, um, the extent of the uh, potential shared parking with the veterinary clinic next door so that there's a, at least an understanding in the file uh, if that parking situation ultimately becomes a, a problem for the property. So that's a letter from the attorney, that adjoining owner? It could be an email. I just want some, you know, Something. just suggest right. some correspondence in the record to reflect that right. they know about it and that uh, under whatever terms and conditions they're okay with potentially over overspill onto their property. There's a row of um, four or five spaces just right on the property line. That's right. probably more than adequate. So if, if that parking is available, then I think a lot of the concerns might go away. And a good thing about this application too, is the two spaces we approved there last year for that site uh, mm -hmm. up front uh, goes mm -hmm. a long way for the handicapped and uh, mm -hmm. older yeah. people. So I think that's mm -hmm. a very positive aspect of this site. Yeah. George, do you want to go with one, one year? One year would be fine. Yeah. Okay. Approval. Jim? Peter, yeah. would you explain to the applicant what that means for him? He has to just come back and see us, right? Yeah. So, so uh, if you're going to you? apply a year, the permit would expire a year from now. Uh, it could be renewed if you decide to stay there. You just have to come back and get it extended by the commission. But sounds like no uh, that's part of their plan anyway. They don't, hopefully don't no have to come back again. Let's hope so. Okay, thank you. All right. Peter, George we don't maybe. have to put a condition in. He doesn't have to come in with uh, money next time, does he, a year from now? Uh, we usually don't. For don't charge in that case. If we do, it's a, it's a nominal fee to cover any legal advertising we have to do. Oh, okay, thank you. 
All right, George made the motion. Is there a second? Second. I'll second. All right, I'll give that one to Tom. Is there any further discussion on this application, on the motion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Abstentions? Congratulations. Thank you very, very much. We appreciate your cooperation mm -hmm. and help. Welcome Especially to the Peter. town of Wethersfield. Especially Peter, he's, he's been very helpful to us. So thank you very much. You're welcome. If you need any new members, maybe Mr. Oikel might want to join. Well, <laughs> we, we usually get somebody to come get me. <laughs> no. We usually uh, do a, a DNA test uh, to make sure you are Italian American. <laughs> I don't, really I don't know if I got any Italian background. I don't know. <laughs> no, but seriously, if you guys, if you guys want to stop by for a nice cup of espresso, feel free to do so anytime. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Okay. Take care. All right. Uh, next item 4.1 pre application review, Frank Satino, 248 Knott Street. And there are a couple sets of plans in here. Mr. Satino, do you want to talk to us about what you want to talk to us about? Yes. Good evening. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Yes. Tonight. I like this Zoom thing. This works out pretty good. I'm comfortable in my house. Uh, this is our third time, and I had some drawings done. We spoke last time, and I spoke with engineering. I spoke with Peter, and we kind of moved things around a little bit. Uh, so I gave Peter two new drawings. One of the drawings that I gave, and we'll talk about that one secondly, is the one building concept. But I gave Peter one showing two two families and two single families. I believe they meet all the zonal requirements, no variances required whatsoever, if I'm correct. And this would all be predicated on the surveyor actually doing the survey and confirming what I have here. Uh, that's one. Secondly, what I'd like to propose, and this proposal came via from the town. Am I okay to say that, Peter? There was a we, we had we had a we we had a, an idea we we're going to discuss. We don't I'll, know if I'll, I'll as appropriate. Correct. Uh, if I take the four unit concept, it's a total of six bedrooms per two family, so that's twelve bedrooms, and it's three bedrooms per single family. That would be a total of eighteen bedrooms, and the footprint on the four units would be 5,108 square feet. The footprint on the townhouse would be 4,320. 18 bedrooms versus 12. I would make the townhouses two bedroom units. Parking, the most I can fit for parking, the, the board had asked, zoning requires four, the board had asked for six. We were able to get five in there comfortably Six just requires so much more parking area simply for the turnaround, for that extra nine by 18 foot space that you need. So I'll comfortably fit five cars. So that would have given us five and five is 10 and three and three would have given us 16 parking spaces. For the townhouse concept, I could fit 24 parking spaces, six of them, inside a garage, each unit would have a garage. The surface area for the driveways, for the par parking in total, anchor, exit, turnaround, on the four unit concept is 9,952 square feet. The surface area for the driveway and parking on the townhouse is 7,844 square feet. The traffic flow for the four units is multiple, four curb cuts. We're hoping everybody utilizes the turnaround on the property so they come out, with, you know, come out head first as opposed to backing out. On the townhouse concept, one way in, one way out, two curb cuts. Uh, and it would be very high end townhouse. We're talking very nicely done, nicely landscaped. 
So that is just a thought. And I wanted to know if the board would be willing to entertain that versus the two two families and the two single families. And I how many bedrooms in how many bedrooms in each of the six units? Uh, two? two bedrooms each, so a total of twelve bedrooms. Okay. Yeah, I was getting confused by all the math. Oh, sorry. Mm -hmm, me too. So eight, so <laughs> yeah, eight, too. Eight, 18 bedrooms for the two two families and the two single families. There would be 18 bedrooms in total. With the townhouse concept, a total of 12 bedrooms, two bedrooms each. Now, with two bedrooms each, I still have the parking of six spaces per unit. And I say that from experience because we did a townhouse project in Hartford 20 years ago. Now, these would not be condos. I would retain these. I'm not looking to sell these. Uh, I could always convert them to condos if I wanted to. But there's enough parking. If someone has company, there's a place to park. We're not worried about somebody being towed because I believe zoning law requires two parking spaces per unit. But if I go two, two, and two, and someone comes to visit, and everybody's home, where are they going to park? So that's why I have the additional parking space. And I still have less surface area for the parking. Peter, is uh, have you discussed this with our town engineer, any of this, and does he have any feelings about it and or the intersection and uh, Notch Street and that interchange, any of that issue? With the, these proposals, oh yeah, <clears throat> sure, has anyone short... to go into it at this point? Because so nothing's the, definite. The short answer to your, to your to your questions is that yes, he has uh, been involved in the review. We've looked at, uh, as Frank indicated, uh, many iterations of this plan. Uh, both the town engineer and myself have had numerous comments um, in terms of traffic and driveways and things like that. Uh, obviously, um, the multifamily design where it gets the driveways and the curb cuts uh, as far away from the intersection as possible uh, is uh, most beneficial. Um, however, in some of the uh, individual lot designs, um, they have tried to maximize getting away from the intersection as, as much as possible, and we've commented on that uh, before. So the other aspect that... Um, we have commented on is the amount of uh, pervious and impervious coverage, which is a big issue these days in terms of minimizing parking and asphalt and building coverage and those kinds of things. So um, they all have their pluses and minuses. So um, the issue with the multifamily design is even though this is in um, you know, a two family zone, uh, the six units would be considered multifamily and in that zone, it's not permitted. Um, even with a, a request for a zone change, we have a minimum uh, two acre lot requirement. So, uh, and I'm not sure that without getting a variance, that's something the commission could waive if you were so inclined to allow that. So uh, there would be a need to revise your uh, SRD, your multifamily regulations, or come up with some sort of new regulation that would allow something like this uh, in an otherwise um, C or two family residential zone. So I guess Frank is looking for some guidance if there is a preferred development scenario here. This lot is almost an acre in size. So it's much, much bigger. You know, it's, it, it's in essence four lots by comparison to the neighborhood. So uh, in looking at this, I thought maybe it's a kind of a unique opportunity to do something different uh, and at the same time allow the property owner to realize, you know, a, a, a development uh, scenario that um, you might not otherwise be able to realize. I, I was, it, it, the more he presented the sort of cookie cutter individual lots, the more, you know, you're, you're really trying to squeeze in some things that might not look great on that corner. And if there were other development options that were worth pursuing, um, he's really just looking for that feedback. If it's if it's worth um, going down that road, or is it 
should he just stick with the, the traditional development pattern um, that you see in the in the surrounding neighborhood? Peter, could you um, just repeat for us what's the difference in impervious surface on the townhouse versus the other one, the total impervious? Is that my, is that for me? I apologize. Sure. That That's probably yep. a it's probably a frank question because these plans are still at the conceptual stage and, and don't offer that level of analysis quite yet. So in terms of the impervious surface, the parking area, turnaround, entrance and entrance drivers, etc. If I went with the four unit proposal, two, two families, two single families. Now this would all be pavers. I, I don't, I'm not a blacktop fan. This would all be pavers. Uh, but the square footage is 9,952. And that's very close. That's an approximate, the survey would fine tune it. But on the one building concept, the square footage is 7,844. And is that, is that square footage just the drive areas or does that include the building footprint no, as well? well that, that's just the driveway area. Okay. In terms of the building footprint, the four unit proposal would be 5,108 square feet. That's the foundation, the open porch, the stoop, et cetera. And the single building, the townhouse concept, it's 4,320 square feet. So it sounds like it's two to 3,000 less on the- No, no, it's uh, about 800 square feet less. I mean, total, if we look at both the parking and the yes. building. Yes, so no, we have uh, nine, 9,500 and 16, yeah. Yeah, considerably less. And this one, I'll, I'll just, is this lot something over one acre? Uh, it's shy of one acre. To, we, now that, to, it, this is just to give you an idea of what we've done. We did 23 units on a lot this size in Hartford. I would never propose that. Parking is a nightmare. I this is what this field. Yeah, no, 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 no. no. I know. I'm, I'm just, just I'm I, trying I, to kid you. I, Don't try I, I, to That's okay. Uh, and that project was built in 2006. It's off of Wethersfield Avenue. And if you drove by it today, you would think we just finished it yesterday. That's how well maintained it is. Yo, the this other lot one, is the, the other, 0.92. Pardon? Right. I think the lot is 0.92 acres. Yes. So I guess, you know, putting aside how you would permit it under our regs and changing the regs and all that stuff, I guess I, I have to say, you know, it seems like there's positives with the farther away from the intersection and with the townhouse um, way to go. And, uh, you know, if we were to if we were to look at something, I guess I would just want to be very, very careful that we're doing it in a very specific way and not having unintended consequences, you know, in lots of places. So maybe that could include you know, some kind of robust minimum lot size and uh, um, you know, not to exceed certain coverages and unit counts and, you know, I suppose all kinds of things if we wanted to go down that approach. The other aspect I wanted to express in terms of quality of life, so the townhouse would be set back on Wilkin Hill Road, 35 feet versus 25. Uh, each unit actually has an area that they can utilize as their own. There's greater grass area, greater area, there's greater open free space, free space. As opposed to the, the two family and the, and the single family concept, there is so much area required for the parking, for the turnaround, there's not much open space left. Could you do me a favor and repeat yes. one more time the total bedroom count difference yes. between the two? So each oh, two okay. family would be six bedrooms. So two two families would give me 12 bedrooms. The two single families being three bedrooms each would be an additional six. So that would be 18 bedrooms versus 12 bedrooms because I would make the townhouses two bedrooms each. Thank you. Hey, uh, Rich, David Drake. Look, yep. For just me looking at it, I think the townhouse seems to be something nicer, but it has to fit. Can you, could you split, put a split between three and four, the unit, and so you have two, two threes? 
Would that fit the multifamily issue? It creates yeah. a challenge with the parking now. Uh, really, why would, it, why, why would it make any difference if you put 10 feet between three and four? Well, how, if I did two separate buildings, I can only separate them going widthwise along Wilkett Hill. And I still need to maintain the setback from Knott Street to the front to the property, which is 25 feet. And then I need to maintain my driveway. I want to allow a buffer between the driveway and the adjoining property. I envision mm -hmm. shrubbery or some, some sort of border. I don't want to put the driveway right alongside the property line. I envision some sort of shrubbery there. Okay. If I separate the buildings, how much do I separate them by? I don't have that much. So do I do two feet, three feet, five feet? If I was going to separate two buildings, I want to separate by a large, by an amount great enough to put some trees, some shrubbery, something. Yeah, you need, you need 10 feet or so, but yeah, yeah. something like that. Yeah. And I don't think we have the 10 feet. I guess you could leave one out. <laughs> put, one out. Put, put five units in instead of six. The, and I, I, and ter, money is not an object. I understand when it comes to the zoning. I realize yeah. that. On my perspective, it's no longer viable. Hmm. And also, there's less, there's less curb cuts with the townhouse option. Now, now Derek commented on the four units. And he approved a concept that I gave him for the curb cuts with the four. I don't know if he's seen the curb cuts for this, this concept here yet. So obviously, engineer would have to say okay to it. I would tend to believe one way, you went, one way in and one way out would be so more that would be two. But with two, one in, this would be one way. One way in, you yeah. come in from that street, uh, and then you would come out on Wilkett Hill Road. Mm -hmm. And the entrance to Nat Street would pretty much be where the entrance is right now for the existing house that's there. Okay. And on Wilkin Hill Road, all the way up at the end. So Peter, 200 feet up. One more question for Peter, yeah. if I could. So just to make sure I understand it, if, if Mr. Satino were to pursue the separate two families and the singles, and if, you know, if he can get that plan done in such a way that it meets all the standards we we basically have no ability to say no to it versus um the townhouse one where we have to change the the regs to enable it but we could theoretically put special permit controls on it so if we if we don't pursue the townhouse he can revert to the multiple curb cuts etc so as you know um a subdivision is a pretty straightforward uh, approval and there isn't a great deal of discretion that the commission has if he meets all of the setbacks and lot sizes and buildable squares, whereas a multifamily, if it's a special permit, gives you uh, a much uh, greater degree of um, um, attaching, you know, appropriate conditions of approval than, uh, a, than a subdivision would. So um, in, in that respect, yes, um, the commission has a much more uh, leeway and discretion. One more item, if I may, for whatever it's worth, the cost of building the townhouses is approximately 20,000 additional per unit, but it's a higher end product. It's something I feel more comfortable in retaining uh, for my personal benefit, as opposed to the two family. Uh, I cannot say no to a tenant that comes along. If they come along with 50 children, I have to, I can't say no. You can only fit so many in a two bedroom unit. So for me, it's a higher end product. Now, and I Peter, are we gonna go room. for a zone change with the, uh, with the multifamily thing? I, I, what I had envisioned, um, not that I've given this a great deal of thought yet, is that um, we would have to amend uh, the SRD zone. And then um, in a couple of areas, the minimum lot size, um, However, there are pros and cons to that as well. It would open up potential other properties in town. I'm not sure how many, but lowering the minimum lot size uh, certainly opens the door for some other properties to be rezoned. But quite frankly, if you look at this lot in context with the neighborhood and how big the lots are, you have to go pretty far away from this lot to find a similar, similarly sized lot anywhere 
in, in I mean, a, a one acre lot, vacant lot in Weathersfield is, is a rarity. So um, mm -hmm. there probably aren't a lot of properties that you would have to worry about, but I would probably recommend that we tweak the existing SRD regulations um, with some safeguards in place. Um, that would be, that would probably be the only way to do that. I, I wouldn't suggest that we create, you know, allow multifamily in the C zone because that would, I, I'm, I'm not sure that would be the way to go. This is, if you, I mean, is, if you did that, Peter, then um, again, I guess you could theoretically say if a, if a lot exceeds the minimum lot size by more than three times and subject to a special permit. So by the time those things are set forth, it may be that as a practical matter, there's not that many places that you could even do it and it would still be subject to a special permit. So I guess I just throw out there, does that way avoid having to worry as much about un, you know, tipping over the SRD regs and having unintended consequences? You know, just a thought. Yeah, as, as I said, I haven't really had, wrapped my head around this idea yet. Um, and I haven't analyzed you know, all the property in the SR, in the, um, the C zone to see what the potential you know, impacts are. But you may, you may be right that it has uh, a potential lesser impact by limiting it to the C zone um, under special under a special permit or something like that. Well, I think you, you probably also almost have a self-fulfilling prophecy if you pick something like, you know, five times the minimum lot size, because, you know, the, there's probably no other lot in the C zone that's, that's an acre. And once you get into other parts of town, you're talking about two acres, which, you know, is, is the minimum for SRD to begin with. Right. Because I think I think the minimum in the C is like seventy five hundred or something like that. I think you can go down to six thousand for single family, uh, but it, it they're very small lot sizes. Yeah, I mean mine was fifty by one fifty there. So I, I I just wanted to have Frank discuss that the merits of it with the commission before we miss the opportunity to consider maybe a better development you know, scenario for this property, because you're not probably gonna see an opportunity like this again. So before he went further um, with different iterations of the subdivision plan, I, I think he just wanted to get a sense. I think this is number 200. Well, <laughs> we're, getting, we're, getting this, we're, we're getting into record territory, I think, so. Well, if yeah, I, I mean, can I, comment. <clears throat> If I could comment on, on on kind of what's being uh, what the approach is uh, before us tonight, without knowing all the details, but on a kind of cursory examination, trying to balance the various uh, sorted uh, risks, advantages, and disadvantages, and the like, it does seem like the the the, the sort of schematic proposition for the development of the townhouse has uh, more advantages than any other s scheme that, than any other scheme for this property that has been posed uh, to the commission so far. And I think I've been on the commission long enough to hear uh, of you know, all the times that this uh, developer has uh, uh, asked for uh, the commission's comments on his uh, various sort of plans on this property. So it does seem like the, the townhouse concept seems to have a, a greater positivity rating uh, than the other schemata that have been uh, passed by the commission previously. So I, I think it's worth considering. Yeah, I mean, I, I, find, it, I find it intriguing, you know, particularly in, in a light of current efforts to diversify our housing base and provide alternatives to, you know, single family standalone homes. Um, Good point, Rich. My, you know, my only hesitation is just making sure that it works, um, you know, from a public safety point of view, whether, you know, the 12 foot driveway is wide enough for, you know, fire trucks if, you know, cars are blocking the intersection and or blocking the driveway and so forth. 
you know, just just those kind of, you know, mundane details that may, you know, derail something that looks like an, an otherwise, you know, good situation, you know, can the, can a trash truck make it around that corner to get out onto Knott Street, that sort of thing, so. Um, George here, I, I would agree with Rich on it. I, I like the townhouse idea, um, but two things would be, uh, there's a lot of big lots in old Wethersfield. Very sea zones down in there that, you know, some of them down there worry me when I walk by them. Um, and someday that could happen down in that area. But I don't think there's any sea zones down there, are there, Rich? Or Peter, are there? Uh, only down on um, Middletown Avenue. Oh, no, I meant down more in the center. And no. Stuff. No? Okay. Okay. And then... Uh, then the intersection, and I don't know what the town or anyone else, and I don't know if the state gets involved because it's uh, the street it's on. Uh, are they gonna be redoing that intersection someday? And if so, does it impact any of this? Um, there is a schematic, um, well, there was a concept plan prepared for the intersection when they did the uh, safe route to school study for um, the elementary school. Uh, however, it, it's not on a capital improvement budget. It's uh, it would have to be a separate standalone, and likely the improvements would stay within the right of way. You wouldn't need additional right of way acquisition, so uh, it wouldn't um, yeah. it wouldn't really impact yeah. this. Yeah. Those, particularly the way they've got the driveways laid out. Right. There is far you can't put in. A you can't put in a roundabout or something just to liven things up there. <laughs> don't don't don't, uh, don't suggest that, <laughs> Rich. What are you doing? <laughs> I just went into Glastonbury yesterday for the first time in a long time to, to get dizzy. Over there, driving nuts. <laughs> and I'm a Worcester guy. I know what traffic circles are. So yeah, but they go the other way there. So <laughs> yeah, true. All right, does anyone else have any feedback for Mr. Satina? All right, well, thank you for visiting with us and sharing this new idea. Thank you, and Peter, I'll be talking to you. I, I'm sure you will. We'll, we'll talk about the next step. We'll Don't stop need, talking to Peter. We'll probably need another informal, I would think. I, I would definitely, I think as you, uh, okay. we would uh, highly recommend that. That's fine. Yeah, Thank you very much. Seven single families with one and a half bedrooms each. And yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, have a wonderful evening. Thank, Thank you very much you. for your time. Thank you. Okay. Bye. Thank you. Take bye care. Bye. Okay. Uh, next item, the February 2nd, 2021 meeting minutes. Has everyone had a chance to look at them? I make a motion to approve, Mr. Chairman. I second. Okay. All right. Motion by George, second by Joe. Any discussion? If not, all in favor say aye. 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 And I'm Opposed? abstaining. Okay. Yolanda's abstaining. All right. Next is uh, Peter, the staff reports 6.1 Planning and Economic Development. Department annual report. I just wanted to share uh, that report, which I just gave to the uh, town manager uh, for your information. It's just a uh, summary of um, activity uh, that the, the boards, commissions, and department uh, worked on over the last year. Uh, I'm not go obviously going to get into it, but if anyone has any questions, I would be happy uh, to answer those, but it's just really uh, provided to you for informational uh, purposes. It's amazing what happens within the course of a supposedly slow year. Yeah, I'm amazed, Peter, how much you did and the, uh, the good job of the report. So it's just for your information. In case anyone asks you what you guys do on the planning and zoning committee. <laughs> mm -hmm. All right. 
just tell them to watch the YouTube videos. Right. You know? Hey, Peter, are you going to stop the town manager from giving you so many assignments to new commissions and committees, though, especially subcommittees? Well, that that, work. that's a good segue into our next agenda item. Thank you, George. <laughs> <laughs> the affordable housing plan? Yes, yes. Yeah, there's another one. You so, got uh, that right. Speaking of you know additional work and committees, uh, the, the state uh, has required uh, each municipality in Connecticut uh, to prepare an affordable housing plan by I believe June. I'm not sure exactly what date it is next year. Um, so we're a little bit behind um, schedule wise to do that, but nevertheless, we're gearing up to doing that. Um, the statutes don't prescribe uh, who should prepare the plan. Uh, they give each town its own individual um, opportunities to uh, go through whatever process and through whatever board commission or entity that they see fit to prepare the plan. They do provide some guidance uh, as to what the plan should include, but um, there's some flexibility in, in that regard as well. Um, we have just started to gear up for that process. Uh, we are uh, working um, with Sustainable CT and some of the uh, neighboring uh, communities, um, West Hartford, uh, Avon, I'm tr um, trying to think now who else, but uh, we are um, in, in terms of economies of scale and sharing uh, ideas and information, we are participating in a little bit of a regional effort uh, to put together our plan. Um, there's actually a meeting next um, next Tuesday uh, from nine to 11 in the morning with those communities to kind of help us move this thing along a little bit. Uh, we have not yet decided uh, how to go forward, whether it would be something the planning and zoning should do as a subcommittee, whether it would be some sort of other ad hoc committee, whether uh, the town council you know, should lead it. So I'm really kind of putting this out there for some feedback uh, and some um, commentary as to you know, what everybody thinks we should really do. I think ultimately the Planning and Zoning Commission would obviously play a significant role in whatever happens or whatever comes out of the plan. So it might make sense for this to be uh, a committee um, you know, that is headed up by a Planning and Zoning Commission member uh, with outreach into other community groups and having them at the table as well. Affordable housing can be a controversial subject no matter what community uh, that you're in. Um, so I just wanted to start the conversation with you guys. I did provide you with a little bit of a one pager uh, handout that the Connecticut uh, chapter of the American Planning Association put together, which gives you a little bit of background. It's very brief, but nevertheless, I just wanted to start the conversation with you guys see if it's something you feel you should own or whether you think it should be some sort of other uh, community group um, you know, that should, should push this forward. As I say, the clock is ticking on us. I have requested some money through the capital improvement uh, program. We'll see if, if we can get some funding to, to bring in a consultant to help us with this. Um, so there are, as I said, a couple of moving parts to this that uh, we need to kind of ramp up and, and uh, put some significant eff effort into this because next June will be here sooner than you know. Will I put you in jail if you don't get it done by next June? I think it, 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 it potentially impacts our ability to get grants and uh, yes. other yeah. funding that we would normally be able to pursue. So it's, a, uh, you know, I don't know if you would view it as a carrot or a stick approach, but they do have some ability um, as we pursue. I'm not sure if we missed the deadline by a month, they're really going to, you know, and as long as we're making efforts, you know, in progress, but, but nevertheless, it, it's a serious uh, requirement that we need to uh, make a serious effort towards. Hey, Peter, David, David Drake. The state doesn't give you didn't give you more guidance what they're expecting. They did put a sort of a guide together, 
Um, but they leave it to you. There are. Well, let me ask you. I'm ask you what, what if you just don't do anything? Then what happens? Obviously, something happens. Well, that's the question I answered for George. There, there would be a, a, a penalty in terms of us not being able to get some state funding that we would normally. Are they going to clarify what that penalty is, or they haven't got that far yet? I think they've. Le I think they left that out there. Um, but. Um, you know, Peter, I, 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 I guess the short answer is we really don't want to, you know, put ourselves in, in that kind of position. Um, and I and I don't and I think our we do a lot of things already um, that that would allow affordable housing to come into the community. We have a housing authority. We have some flexible zoning regulations. We allow pretty high densities. We allow accessory apartments. I, I think it's what they really are wanting communities to do is to evaluate themselves, uh, look at what they do. Um, look how that contributes to affordable housing and maybe come up with some uh, additional uh, recommendations. There are communities that have already done their plans and they can be pretty simple, short, sweet, uh, but have a recommendations for how to, uh, and we're very close to the 10% um, affordable housing percentage. I think we're at 9.5, 9.44. So mm -hmm. getting to that 10% is not a not going to be a big lift for us. Um, we could probably get that if we had a, uh, you know, a larger multifamily project that had a couple of affordable, a small percentage of affordable housing in it. So uh, I, I don't think um, the recommendations when we go through this process are really going to be all that uh, earth shattering. If, if, if we had some affordable housing units in the three recent multifamily projects that we approved, we would probably already be at the 10%. So some, some small common sense approaches, I think are, uh, uh, you know, without predicting what this plan is gonna say are, are within our ability without very little impact to the community. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I guess just to, to follow up on what Peter said, you, you know, my, my sense from having spoken to other people in other towns about this is that it, it is just a plan to show, you know, essentially what what opportunities we are making available. And, you know, as we just discussed with that, you know, the townhouse proposal, you know, not that any there's any indication that that's going to be an affordable housing project, but just, you know, the opportunity to have multifamily um, and, and so forth is is something that that counts toward it. I guess to go back to to Peter's original question of whether this is something, you know, we want to take the lead on or, you know, kind of dodge and leave to someone else. Um, you know, as much as I'm not looking for more things to do or for more things for Peter to do, frankly, I think it it is important that we take the lead on this because I don't know, you know, what other agency or organization in town would be interested and capable of doing it. And it also seems like it would dovetail with um, probably a major component of the plan of conservation and development that we're going to be working on over the same, same time frame anyway, you know, so it would have, avoid a duplication of effort and, you know, basically give us one of the uh, a running start on one of the chapters for that, um, you know, without any additional work. I, I agree with you, uh, Rich, uh, that uh, the role belongs to the commission. Um, I wouldn't want anyone else in town trying to do it, uh, like the housing authority or somebody like that. Uh, I, you know, I don't. I think your suggestion is appropriate, especially we're working on the plan of development in the next couple of years, so. It, it fits in and fits in with the town trying to establish a consultant to handle a couple or three of these things at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it, it, and it would be, be great to have other groups and agencies want to participate in it. But I, I think, you know, just to make sure that it at least leaves the starting gate, we should probably be the, be the people how, 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 Peter, are these other towns going to fit into it? You're trying to find. So, so 
yeah, the, um, the su sustainable CT, uh, as you recall, we're a, we're a recently uh, designated sustainable CT community. They're kind of pulling uh, a group together so that, um, you know, they, they will, they, they are producing uh, individual um, town reports on demographics, how much housing you have, what type of housing uh, to help move, move the process along in a little more effective way. We're also going to hear from towns that have already gone through the process. So basically sharing resources, sharing information, uh, acting as a clearinghouse, um, kind of setting the table for us to move forward and, and put together uh, a plan uh, with some insight from from other communities in the in the in the Hartford metro region. Okay, that sounds good. I'd I'd hope that we could uh, do it with the towns around us here to the south. Uh, you know, three, four, six towns, whatever, would make more sense to me than the whole generalized outer region. Okay. Yep. Yeah, they they put it out to all the communities or the sustainable CT communities and then only certain ones, you know, responded and wanted, wanted to participate and we were one of them. So as I said earlier, if anyone is particularly, particularly interested in this subject, um, next Tuesday from 9 to 11 a.m., there's going to be this uh, call with the surrounding communities. They're gonna kind of go through various agenda items to get us thinking in a certain way uh, about how to do this. So if anyone's um, interested, uh, uh, let me know and I will forward to you the, uh, the Zoom information so that you can um, listen in and uh, observe and hopefully, hopefully get some benefit uh, out of the meeting. So um, just let me know. So I think I'm hearing that you guys wanna take the lead. I will consult with the town manager and uh, just make sure that he's, he's okay with you guys taking the lead versus some other group. I, and I think he, I think he is. So, um, and then I'll come back with um, maybe a proposed approach, how to do this. And I do think we need to reach out to other uh, community organizations um, who may have an interest in, in housing uh, so that they can you know, be at the table as, as we go forward. I'm kind of envisioning this maybe like the bike ped committee where you have different stakeholders um, who <clears throat> participate in, in the process as we go forward so that we've got that community input before we get to the end of the process and present a plan to the community that didn't have that kind of input. That's a good idea, Peter. The uh, operation of the bike ped committee, uh, even though delayed for the last year a bit, uh, is working well with the input from all the people that are in it, I think. Okay. All right. And thank you. Sure. Next item is public comment. Um, is Mr. Verselli here? He sent me an email yesterday uh, indicating that he would um, not be participating uh, on the agenda tonight. Um, so he is not he is not with us tonight. Okay. Is there anyone else from the public that has anything they'd like to say during public comments on general matters of planning and zoning? Looks like no. All right. Is there anything else, Peter? Just uh, two little things. Just uh, FYI, the approval that you granted for the contractor storage yard at 61 Arrow Road. Uh, I was informed yesterday that uh, the electric utility company that uh, received that approval is has pulled out. They are not going to use that property. Uh, all the trucks are, are gone, uh, supposedly, and they have found another uh, another site. So um, that project will not um, be utilizing the remaining time frame uh, in their permit. And then the only other thing is just a reminder that about the March 6th uh, Connecticut Bar um, training session uh, that normally is referred to as the Wesleyan uh, sessions is uh, we have reserved some slots based on those 
who expressed an interest uh, in participating in that. We will get you uh, the details of that when we get a little bit closer to the uh, March 6th date. So I just wanted to uh, remind you, th for those of you who, who wanted to participate in that. And the, the way it's going to work is that the people who have signed up, assuming you've signed up far enough in advance, you will be getting the materials in the mail prior to the meeting. So you don't get a PDF of 600 pages that you have to print off on your own. Um, and it, it is going to be a, a long day of Zooming. But uh, my understanding is that people are going to be doing PowerPoints so that at least it'll be a little more interesting and visual, but uh, miss out on the tuna sandwiches. And the happy hour at the end, right? I, I guess I've missed out on that every time, too. Oh, that's the other one. That's the uh, annual. Yeah, it's the aqua turf thing. Aqua turf one. Yeah. All right. Anybody else have anything? If not, is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Second, George. Okay. All right. Motion by Joe, second by George. All in favor, say aye. 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 Take care. Good night. Um, have a good you. night. Good night, everyone. Thank good night. you. Be, care be careful in our next snowstorm. That's right. That's the last one, I hope.